Hey, okay, so today I'm going to discuss um, the Journey of Oz assignment that we have for this last week of class, and I'm so excited that DAT and hap weekend happened and everything that went on this week, so um, it's been a nice little recovery, and this is so such a great project to kind of reflect on everything. Okay, so what I learned this semester, I think I learned a lot about um, what it truly means to read and understand evidence. Uh, the methods I use to, I learned to like break down research has completely changed and my understanding of like what I'm reading from before has, is like night and day. I also think it was like a great review of grammar that was like an eye opener and um, diagnostic accuracy was a great review just because you use it, you learn it in an EVP class like I learned in undergrad or in my master's program and part of undergrad, but um, it's always good to review those things. So I definitely think uh, those were awesome reviews. Uh, now what, now that I've taken the class, what does EVP mean to me? I would say EVP is still practicing the way that utilizes the best evidence that's available uh, while taking your or my general expertise or whatever I know um, clinically and also incorporating patient values. Um, understanding patient-centered care and what's best for your patient I think is really what drives EVP and EVP wouldn't be around if we didn't care about those things um, and also uh, we do, of, do all of that to provide that care and to be more efficient. I think everybody wants to provide the most efficient care that you're not wasting your patient's time. So that's kind of what EVP means to me. Um, as in implementing this into my clinical practice, I think just understanding and being able to read through research a lot faster or being able to identify what research is good and what's bad, I think will help me a lot and to not be so hesitant to go search for articles on what I want to accomplish and when I'm asking a question, uh, asking my clinical question, um, that as I'm going through research I'm not uh, wasting my time on bad research because now I can thoroughly evaluate it and know if it's good or not. I think that was an awesome review that we did this um, semester as well. And then also just that um, in the past, I, even though I've learned these things in the past, I think I have a better grasp on them. So, uh, going through and sifting through articles and searching for them, I just feel like every time I learn and do something like this and exercises that we did in class, I get a lot better. Uh, I think with this, I'll be more inclined to tackle articles on my downtime because I don't need to put hours, a couple hours together in order to properly um, properly do a search. I can do it in 20 minutes and have a bunch of articles and then read them later. Uh, some questions I still have. Um, I'd really like to learn more about how to start a practice-based research project and thankfully I'm on campus so Maybe we can sit down and talk about what opportunities I have with Swim and Dive and how that is going to impact my practice. If I'm doing that, is it going to take a lot of extra time? I presume that it won't and I will have some extra time with Swimming and Diving to implement that and an extra hand with um, Ethan. So hopefully we can sit down and think of a few ideas and a few projects we can do. I think it'll be really interesting with a fresh group of freshmen um, and a fresh team uh, with no uh, preconceived notions of what our role is. Uh, so that is kind of nice and we especially have um, some coaches that really advocate for our time and I think would really love to be a part of some practice-based research. Another question I have is as I move into a preceptor role, which will be kind of new for me, how do you start undergrad students um, on incorporating EVP 
into their practice, even though it can be overwhelming because they're just now learning some really basic things, especially sophomores. And how, so how do we incorporate EVP into their learning experience? Do we push them to search articles, even if they're not so efficient at it? Do I do that for them, provide them articles to read, provide them good and good articles so that they have an example, something to grasp as they go forward and, you know, start incorporating EVP more and more. I'm not really sure how the education it program works now because it's so different than when I was here. So I would really love, like, some advice. Where do you start? How do you talk about it? And is it just act and they'll do as well? They'll follow. Um, I think those are some really important, um, I guess, qualities that I want to go forward is really incorporating EVP in how I teach and um, teach the students that I'm per being a preceptor for. Um, my most proud thing this semester is completing, to be honest. It was really overwhelming, and I was never in the same city for more than a week. It felt like I was traveling all around, and so getting assignments done on time was huge for me. Uh, even down to this assignment, I'm kind of, I've been traveling all day, and so uh, that was huge for me. Um, it was like, okay, you know, unloading a big backpack when something was done um, every week. So I'm really excited that I completed. And I also think the Ignite presentation, it had me very anxious and very, um, I, I don't know how else to explain it. I guess just nervous because that was something new I'd never done. I'd seen plenty of TED Talks and I understood, but living up to that hype um, of what I've always watched over the years uh, was really, really made me nervous. So I was excited to get that TED talk done and that I felt it went pretty well. Um, and I'm excited to continue to do those. I think my presentation skills can get a lot better. The way I communicate and the way I talk, I think I hope to really emphasize while I'm at um, Indiana State. Um, so going forward, please push me to do more of that and more of these uh, videos, things like that, presenting really excited about it. Um, so one of the biggest challenges I think I had was the amount of work. Kind of like what I'm most proud of of completing, that that was challenging me every week to really sit down and to lay out what I needed to complete, when I needed to complete it, and setting time away. I think I'll get better at this in this next semester when I have more of a schedule and I'm not out of town or I'm not at home where it's really relaxed, I'm in more of an educational setting and I can go to school and sit down at a table and get things done. Uh, but that was really hard for me to do this semester in particular. Uh, as the weeks went on, it just felt like it got harder and harder because those big projects kind of piled on. Um, but all in all, uh, I'm glad to be on the other side of it and looking back and seeing how much I learned. Uh, and, you know, I, like I said, the Ignite project was really challenging. Uh, and I, I hope to really overcome that fear of presenting and feeling really comfortable and being able to just talk to my audience like you do in an Ignite presentation rather than speak the facts that you've put on a slide. Um, so my creativity needs to be pushed for sure. Um, I don't claim to be the most creative of people. So I think this will really help me grow and um, become not only a better clinician, but a better teacher, a better educator, and you know, a better uh, even a pr practicing clinician, I think. Um, if I can talk so passionately about something, I should be able to do it with every day with my patients and my athletes and whoever I'm seeing, and even with my colleagues. I hope one day that I'm a leader in um, pushing new topics and pushing new um, ways of practicing to all the people I'm around. So thank you so much for a great semester, and I'll see you in a few weeks.